Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Welcome to Top 5 from The Ray Taylor Show, where each week I rank movies in a variety of categories from franchise and subgenre to directors and actors. No film is left unwatched as I break down my top five picks. So join me every Sunday for new episodes and get ready to dive into the world of film with Top 5 from The Ray Taylor Show. In this episode, I am ranking my Top 5 Mia Goth films. This is in, in 2015, Mia Goth starred in her first leading role as Sophie in the psychological horror film The Survivalist. Her, for, her performance in the film was praised for its intensity and emotional depth. Apart from her film work, Goth has also made appearances in television. Mia Goth's acting style is often characterized by her ability to bring a sense of depth and vulnerability to her characters. She has a unique on-screen presence that captivates audiences and allows her to tackle complex and challenging roles. Throughout her career, Mia Goth has demonstrated versatility and a willingness to take on diverse projects, making her a rising talent in the film industry. With her talent and dedication, she continues to leave a lasting impression on audiences and is undoubtedly an actress to watch in the coming years. That is why I wanted to dive into her filmography and share my top five films that I love, her, my favorite films that Mia Goth is in. And that is what we are doing here. The first film of hers that I saw that I remember seeing that really stood out to me was X, the Ty West horror film. Uh, after watching that, was excited to watch the prequel prequel to that film uh, known as Pearl, which Mia Goth not only starred in, but also co-wrote uh, her, her performance in X. She was also she played two separate characters in X. Uh, both films I really enjoyed. I a few months ago did a top five Ty West films where I watched all of his films after having watched both of those and also was the impetus for me wanting to do this top five to highlight my favorite movies starring Mia Goth. Well, actually, not necessarily starring, but the five movies of hers that are my favorite. So let's get into my top five Mia Goth film starting off with number five this is a simple movie great performance but this was also the first film she had a leading role in as i mentioned before coming in number five is the survivalist which came out in 2015 it's a post-apocalyptic thriller written and directed by stephen uh fingleton it's a British slash Irish co-production and marks Fingleton's feature film directorial debut. The movie had its world premiere at the Tribeca Film Festival in April 2015 and received critical acclaim for its intense and gripping storytelling. Set in a dystopian future where resources are scarce, society has collapsed, and survival is a daily struggle, the survivalist follows the life of a lone man known only as the survivalist who is played by Martin McCann. He lives in isolation deep within a forest where he cultivates his small plot of land to grow food and protect himself from potential threats. One day, two desperate women, a mother played by Owen Foyer and her teenage daughter, Milja, played by Mia Goth, discover the survivalist's hidden homestead seeking shelter and sustenance. They propose a trade for sex, for food, but the survivalist remains wary and cautious. The survivalist explores themes of survival, human nature, trust, and the lengths people will go to endure in a world where survival is paramount. It offers a bleak and uncompromising depiction of post-apocalyptic society where desperation and self-preservation drive the character's actions. The film also delves into complex human relationships and the dynamic of trust and betrayal in extreme circumstances. 
It examines the moral dilemmas faced by characters and how their choices impact their survival and humanity. Critics praise The Survivalist for its haunting atmosphere, powerful performances, and skillful direction. It stands out as a thought-provoking and gripping addition to the post-apocalyptic genre, offering a raw and intimate portrayal of humanity's darkest instincts and its unyielding desire to survive. Overall, The Survivalist is a captivating and harrowing cinematic experience that will leave viewers contemplating the nature of humanity and the lengths one would go to endure in a world stripped of civilization and comfort. This is a simple, independent film. Not very many actors, very simple premises, very simple plots. Uh, Mia Goth, being her first major role, has a great performance and uh it's a great it's a great movie if you're a fan of you know like zombie movies specifically is very similar in in many ways to a zombie movie i've been rewatching the walking dead a lot of similarities between that uh but this is a great simple independent film a lot of tension a lot of uh kind of twists in some ways uh, but i really enjoyed it it, with Mia Goss' performance, but overall just a, a great movie in general. So coming in at number five, my fifth favorite Mia Goth film is The Survivalist. Moving on to my fourth favorite Mia Goth film. This is a film that is a remake of a classic horror film, which I reviewed, I believe, last October when I tend to review a lot of horror films, including classic horror films. And this one was a film that I watched reviewed by a well-known renowned horror director and had mixed feelings on. Uh, but I did enjoy, however, the remake that is this movie coming in at number four. Suspiria came out in 2018. Supernatural horror film directed by Luca Guadagnino. It serves as a reimagining and homage to Dario Argento's 1977 classic of the same name, which is the movie that I reviewed, which if you want to go back and check out the full review, you can do so. Just search Suspiria, uh, and I probably put the year 1977. And I will be doing a full review of this movie as well, as I like to do full reviews of films that are within franchises i also like to do remakes uh movies that have been remade i like to compare and contrast them uh, so i will be doing eventually uh, a, a review of that as well which you can subscribe to that podcast the ray taylor show movie and tv show reviews uh, on all your podcast apps or of course has its own playlist over on youtube.com slash inspired disorder regardless so if you want to hear my full thoughts on the original you can do so and coming up in the next few weeks i'll be doing a review of this one uh while the original film is set in germany guaranino's version is relocated to berlin in the year 1977 during the time of the german autumn a period marked by political unrest and terrorist activities the story revolves around susie banyan played by Dakota Johnson, an American ballet dancer who arrives in Berlin to audition for a prestigious Marcos Dance Academy. The Academy, run by an enigmatic and mysterious Madame Blanc, played by Tilda Swinton, is renowned for its unique and avant-garde dance style. Susie impresses the instructors with her raw talent, and despite her limited experience, she secures the lead role in the Academy's upcoming performance. Mia Goth plays one of the other dancers at this academy uh, and is a friend, a confidant of the main character played by Dakota, um, by uh, Dakota Johnson. Suspiria explores themes of power, control, femini femininity, and the darkness that can lie hidden within seemingly elegant and prestigious institutions. It delves into the complexities of female relationships and the lengths some may go to achieve their desires. The film is known for its atmospheric and haunting visuals combined with intense and visceral and eerie 
and unsettling dance moments, atmospheric throughout, enhanced by an unsettling and experimental soundtrack composed by Tom York from Radiohead, somebody who has made some of the best scores to movies over the past uh, probably decade or so since I think he began. Um, the film features a talented cast led by Dakota Johnson as Susie Banyan. Tilda Swinton takes a triple role playing not only Madame Blanc, but Helena Marcos, as well as Dr. Joseph Klemperer, which is kind of weird. Took me a while to realize the Helena Marcos role, uh, completely unrecognizable. Uh, the doctor role, which is a man that she is playing, uh, clearly looks like an, a, somebody wearing old age man makeup. Like, almost looks like bad grandpa. So, kind of understandable that they were so determined to cast have women play the majority of the roles in a film about women and it, it like i understand the motivation for it but uh the makeup and and effects weren't enough to completely hide tilda swinton it she t she has no problem taking big swings uh which i appreciate other notable actors include of course mia goth uh, as Sarah, Chloe Grace Moretz as Patricia, and Angela Winkler as Miss Tanner. Suspiria received mixed and positive, mixed to positive reviews from critics. While some praised its visual style, performances, and daring storytelling, others found it to be too slow-paced and divisive. I appreciate it. I enjoyed it far more than the original. And they are trying to do different things. I understand what Argento was trying to do and appreciate that film for what it was doing. This movie, a lot of things changed, but I enjoyed the changes and I didn't feel that it was slowly paced at all. I guess slowly paced, but it wasn't, it, it wasn't a, a problem for me. I wasn't bored or anything. I was, I was hooked by this film. This film's bold approach to reinterpret a horror classic and its dark, thought-provoking themes garnered both admiration and skepticism from audiences as i said i prefer the this remake to the original uh both films definitely trying to do different things overall suspiria stands as a visually stunning and artistically ambitious horror film that pushes the boundaries of genre it may not be for everyone but it has earned its place in a distinctive and memorable entry in the realm of supernatural horror cinema and a great movie. I was so glad I finally watched it. So glad I've seen both movies and understand the differences. And I think this movie definitely handled aspects of the movie where in the original felt almost out of place. Like the, the it, I don't know, things weren't set up in a way. There was a, a focus. Visually, they are very different as well. Uh, but I loved this movie. Coming in at number four, my fourth favorite Mia Goth film, Suspiria, from 2018. Let's take a quick break from this episode to talk about Attention, attention all, all Ray, Ray Taylor, Taylor Show, Show fans. fans! We're excited to announce we've just released a line of exclusive merchandise featuring original artwork inspired by the show. Our high-quality shirts and biodegradable phone cases are a perfect way to show your support for the show and make a great gift for any fan. Plus, with each purchase, you'll be helping us continue to bring you great content. So don't wait. Head on over to InspiredDisorder.com now and check out the full collection. Thanks for listening, and we hope you'll show your support by grabbing some Ray Taylor Show merchandise today. And now, let's get back to the show. Moving on to my third favorite Mia Goth film. This is a slot that had changed the most out of everything on my list, moved things around. Uh, but settling in here at number three is also the first film I remembered Mia Goth standing out, her performance as an actress, not only playing one character, but similar to Tilda Swinton, playing multiple characters in this movie, playing two specific characters. Coming in at number three is X. 
Came out in 2022. Slasher film written and directed, produced, edited by Ty West. The film stars Mia Goth in dual role as a young woman named Maxine, as well as an older elderly woman named Pearl. The plot revolves around a cast and crew who get together to make a porno film at this older couple's elderly couple's rural Texas property, but find themselves threatened by a homicidal couple. This movie was filmed in New Zealand. The movie showcases the production. Uh, the the film filmed the movie showcases the production taking place in the Manwata region. Primarily in Fordell near Wanganyu. I'm sorry, New Zealanders. I butchered those names. The film score was composed by Tyler Bates and Chelsea Wolfe, emphasizing vocals and synthesizers. X had its world premiere at South by Southwest Festival on March uh, 13, 2022 and was later released theatrically in the United States March 18, 2022 by A24. One of the few or only movie studios that is willing to abide by the the demands of the writers and actors that are currently on strike that Disney and the rest of the large companies are not willing to negotiate. A24 is a studio who clearly loves and supports movies and the artists that are responsible for making movies the writers and the actors and because of that because they were willing to negotiate with the the writers and actors there are current a24 productions that are taking place while everybody else all the other studios are unwilling to negotiate with the unions uh so i love a24 even more just wanted to point that out since we are currently in a time historically where both the Writers Guild and the Screen Actors Guild are both on strike uh, because large corporations are unwilling to pay their worthless CEOs any less. Uh, in my opinion, they should replace CEOs and executives with AI and pay artists, pay the people who actually make the art that they you know, profit from while li- literally doing no, none of the work. So back to this. Uh, So good on A24. This movie received generally positive reviews from critics who appreciated its homage to the classic slasher films, particularly the Texas Chainsaw Massacre that came out in 1974, which is right around the time when this movie is set, and praised the performances of Mia Goth, Brittany Snow, and Jenna Ortega. X explores themes, which by the way, to another caveat i found out recently after jenna ortega's massive success with the netflix show wednesday i found out that jenna ortega is from my hometown of la quinta and uh props to her that's it's kind of great because she's she's amazing in wednesday she's great in this x explores themes of aging youth and longing over the past as well as the relationships between beauty aging and self-worth it plays homage to classic horror films uh, with notable notable influences from the texas chainsaw massacre as i mentioned before and other genre classics the film the film's unique take on the slasher genre along with its visceral scares and artistic direction contribute to the success of it at the box office and critical acclaim as part of a film series with a prequel titled pearl may or may not show up on this list we'll see Hmm. Uh, and a sequel that is currently in development titled maxine with three x's obviously Uh, x is the first installment in what promises to be a chilling and captivating exploration of horror and human psychology this is a film i have done a full review of uh, and i love this film so if you want to check out my full thoughts of and review of the film X, that is another thing you could find through podcast platforms at Ray Taylor Show Movie and TV Show Reviews or on YouTube.com slash Inspired Disorder. I've also done, as I mentioned, may have mentioned, a top five Ty West, a top five episode of Ty West movies where this movie definitely made the list. But you'll have to check out the episode to see where it landed on my top five favorite Ty West films. 
Uh, this movie is great. It's uh, it's this is a great movie on its own, just uh, as a self-contained slasher film, which was the first to come out in this franchise. But I have to say, watching Pearl definitely adds a lot more. If you watch this movie after you watch Pearl, which is the prequel, uh, which I love a prequel that can add to the movies that follow it in the timeline of events. Uh, Watching Pearl before watching this adds a lot to the characters, especially the Pearl character in this movie. Uh, It really adds a lot of depth also knowing her husband in this and just the property itself right adds a lot to the characters as well as the location uh many reasons why at number three my third favorite mia goth film is x huge fan of ty west as well uh so ty west and mia goth both the inspirations for me doing this list as well as the ty west top five moving on to my second favorite uh, Mia Goth film. This is the most recent film I've watched of hers. The last of all of her films that I watched in preparation for this and was a movie I was looking forward to not only because Mia Goth is in it, but also because the writer director of this film made a movie a few years ago that I absolutely loved, who has is a Nepo baby. His father is a well known director in the very similar vibe very similar genre to this film coming in at number two movie i was very excited to watch and was blown away but it only comes in here at number two didn't make my number one my second favorite mia goth film is infinity pool this movie came out this year 2023 it's a science fiction horror film written and directed by brandon cronenberg the son of david cronenberg Uh, The movie stars Alexander Skarsgård from The Northmen, also from uh, Succession. This also stars Mia Goth, Cleopatra Coleman, and those are in the lead roles. The story follows a struggling writer, James Foster, and his wife, M, who go to a vacation, go on vacation, I say, at a resort in a fictional seaside country of Lil Tolka, during their vacation, they meet a fan of James's only published novel, Gabby, and her husband, Alden. Gabby is Mia Goth's character in this film. The four decide to spend time together, but their trip takes a dark turn when they accidentally kill a local man and become entangled in the country's sinister culture, their particular flavor of uh, criminal justice in the country and that is where w- the movie really opens up and you see like many uh brandon cronenberg and david cronenberg films there is a dark dark sci-fi horror element to it and when we see when this movie gets to that point it really opens up the film delves into themes of corruption guilt and the dark side of human nature as the characters are faced are yeah, faced with the consequences of their actions. Infinity Pool is praised for its atmospheric and unsettling tone with Brandon Cronenberg's direction creating a sense of dread and suspense throughout the film. The performances of the lead actors, especially Mia Goss' portrayal of Gabby, have also been well-received by critics. But I would say, even though this movie is not my favorite of hers, I would say this is the best or my favorite performance of Mia Goth. So, kind of weird how this could have been number one, and at times was at number one, but to to rank the movies by my favorite movies, uh, this one came in at number two. But great performances by Mia Goth as a portrayal of Gabby, uh, and also well, uh, so well received by critics. However, some reviewers have criticized the plot and storyline, feeling that the film's attempts at cultural commentary and shock value may overshadow the substance of the narrative, which I completely disagree with. I think it nails everything it's trying to do. Uh, and But I think I, I definitely think B- Brandon Cronenberg is a, a required, t- is, a, is a specific, not, not everybody's good. Same thing with his dad. Not everybody loves a David Cronenberg film. 
But if you enjoy his filmmaking, then you will probably enjoy this movie, the themes, what it's trying to what it's trying to say. Despite some mixed reviews, the movie's premiere at the Sundance Film Festival was met with positive reaction, earning praise from its uh, for its unique take on the horror genre and its exploration of dark themes. Infinity Pool continues to captivate audiences with its gripping storytelling, eerie atmosphere, and thought-provoking concepts. I did, again, a full review of this on Friday. I did on the Ray Taylor Show movie and TV show reviews. I did a full movie review of Infinity Pool in anticipation for this episode. So if you want to check out my full review, again, subscribe to the Ray Taylor Show movie and TV show review podcast or YouTube.com slash Inspired Disorder. Probably my favorite performance for me in Goth. As I said, I am a big fan of Brandon Cronenberg. This being his third film, son of David Cronenberg, makes films and with a vibe that's very similar, similarly dark, unique use of sci-fi in order to tell the story. Amazing. Uh, also love his use of in-camera effects. Very artistic creative ways of doing in-camera effects using lighting and lenses practical effects editing everything i love it is very organic and real and the the lack of or the the absence of computer generated aspects of this movie make me enjoy brandon cronenberg and his style uh, a lot and mia goss performance is so good there is and it gets better like it it starts off great and just keeps getting better throughout this film so good infinity pool itself great movie huge fan of brandon cronenberg that's why it's here at number two my second favorite mia goth film is infinity pool let's take a quick break from this episode because i want to promote are you looking for a way to take your love of the ray taylor show to the next level look no further than inspired disorder plus as a member you'll get access to a whole host of amazing perks including the full week of shows ad free in both audio and video versions a live painting archive early access to the many faces members only discounts and deals a podcast back catalog with over 600 episodes but that's not all as a member you'll get access to my personal blog as well as my creative writing you will also get the chance to ask me anything you want with all of these benefits and more inspired disorder plus is a must have for any fan of the ray taylor show so don't wait go sign up now head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash plus and start enjoying all of the amazing perks of the membership and now let's get back to the show moving on to my favorite Mia Goth film. This was probably the movie that really inspired me to check out all of her stuff. Not only seeing her performance in X, which was two performances, but then watching this movie, knowing that this movie was co written by Mia Goth, also starring Mia Goth. And the movie itself was so aesthetically different from X, yet still within that world. Coming in number one is Pearl. This movie also came out in 2022. Slasher film directed by Ty West, co-written by Ty West and Mia Goth. The movie serves as the prequel to the same year, the movie X, which both were filmed back to back. This one filmed in secret, which is pretty amazing. And uh, this is the second installment in the franchise, despite being the first of the linear timeline of events in the franchise. The film stars Mia Goth in the titular role of Pearl, uh, with also uh, roles by David uh, Corin Sweat. Tandy Wright, Matthew Sunderland, and Emma Jenkins Perot in supporting roles. The story is set in 1918 during the influenza pandemic, during World War I, and during a time because of World War I 
uh, a lot of xenophobic hate towards Germans. And Pearl and her, her family, Pearl being a young woman living with her German immigrant parents on their Texas homestead, all of those things converging, making the story of this even more impressive. I did a full review of this movie as well. I was so impressed with just the depth of the time and place this movie takes place, which is very similar to X. The time and place X takes place in the year X takes place, uh, being set in Texas and also having to do with televangelists, which was a major trend of the time. This movie taking place in the time of 1918 when the original pandemic was going on, the influenza pandemic of 2018, also World War I, which contributed to the spread of that pandemic, as well as the hate because of propaganda, the hate in America of Germans and her family being German immigrants in Texas. All of those things contribute to everything that happens, the pressure, the stress of everything that happens in this movie. Pearl aspires to become a chorus uh, a, a dancer and dreams of a more exciting life thinks that that will be the thing that gets her out of this small town uh, captivated by the films she sees in her local cinema however she is also depicted as a disturbed individual engaging in violent and abusive behavior towards her family and animals at the farm the film explores themes of aspiration, jealousy, and the dark side of human nature while also playing, paying homage to the films of the golden era of Hollywood with references to The Wizard of Oz as Mary Poppins, the aesthetic of this movie, very bold, saturated colors, very much feels like people are going to bust out into song as if this is a musical, but it is a horror movie with bright, bold, saturated colors, which is such a contrast, the dark nature of this film in contrast to the beautiful, beautiful look of everything. Mia Goss' performance as Pearl has been widely praised by critics with her portrayal of the disturbed and captivating character being standout aspect of the film. Pearl had its world premiere at the 79th Venice Film Festival and was later released in theaters in the United States. It received acclaim for its crit from its critics for Ty West's direction, the screenplay, and Mia Goss' compelling performance. The film's exploration of dark themes and its connection to classic Hollywood cinema have also been lauded by reviewers. One of the best performances, but not my favorite performance from hers, uh, but it is great to see a film that she not only stars in, but also co-wrote. And I love the look of this film. As I said, the time and place adds so much to the story, so much of the horror. This is clearly Ty West has a love of cinema and an understanding of not only cinema, but un an understanding of history and his ability to tie those things in to his films specifically these two films the ideas of film how film can be an escape not only for this character pearl to feel like she's escaping while watching a film but thinking that getting into the film industry will be her literal escape geographical escape uh, but while everything else going on in the world forcing everybody to be secluded and isolated kind of only put pressure on this already disturbed woman to do very disturbing things and all of those reasons including Mia Goth's performance are the reason why my number one favorite Mia Goth film is Pearl highly recommend checking it out check out my full review if you want to see my full unadulterated <laughs> thoughts on this film uh, some honorable mentions High Life was really great. Another slow, kind of a horror movie, deep space indie film. I enjoyed it. Mia Goth has a much smaller role in that film. And also the film just 
on an entertainment value didn't like i like a lot of what it's trying to uh, what it su- succeeds in doing but it wasn't i didn't enjoy the experience enough to put it on on this list uh but still is an honorable mention so high life also cure for wellness very interesting story very unique very surreal type of a story and uh one that almost could have made the list it was very entertaining it did feel kind of long though uh but an honorable mention nonetheless so cure for wellness high life both honorable mentions let me recap my list and we will get out of here shall we this is my top five mia goth movies starting off with number five is the survivalist number four is suspiria from 2018 Number three is the horror film X. Number two is Infinity Pool. And my number one favorite Mia Goth film is the horror film Pearl. Let me know how you would rank your favorite Mia Goth films. Let me know if there's movies of hers that I should reconsider putting on this list. There are many others that I watched that I just... They were okay. There's a lot. She she picks such unique, interesting characters and interesting roles. Uh, I'm excited to see what she does in her career. Excited to see her path and her rise and uh, everything that she does. I'm a huge fan. Thank you all for tuning into this episode of Top 5 from The Ray Taylor Show. I do hope you enjoyed my rankings and analysis of my Top 5 Mia Goth films. Let me know how you would rank your five best Mia Goth movies in the comments. Hit me up on social media. Are there any films I missed or should reconsider? And join the conversation by leaving a comment or rating on your favorite podcast platform or over on YouTube.com slash Inspired Disorder if you want to watch all of these episodes. Don't forget to tune in next Sunday for an all-new episode and see you again next week for more Top Five. Subscribe to The Ray Taylor Show on YouTube and everywhere podcasts are found. Binge the full week ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Purchase Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace out! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had, can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.